Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look at the basics of enzyme action. So first of all we're going to think about the active site. Um, we need to remember that an enzyme is a sequence of amino acids um, and that sequence is uh, quite irregular so there's no um, like repeating pattern. The amino acids appear in a fairly irregular fashion and obviously the sequence will be different for each, uh, for each enzyme. And then this sequence here this long chain, um, this polypeptide, is going to be folded into a 3D tertiary structure. Okay, so here we can see an example of how it might be folded. Obviously, this is very simplified, but imagine that this represents um, a 3D sort of spherical structure because enzymes are globular proteins. And this tertiary structure here is held in place by various bonds. So we would have some hydrogen bonds, maybe some disulfide bridges and other covalent bonds holding this structure in place. And what you can see here, there's a depression. Okay, so if this were, you know, if you can imagine this is a sort of a spherical shape, there's a slight depression in the surface. Um, this is the active site, so this is where the enzyme binds. And the shape of this active site will be different in each different type of enzyme as a result of the way that the rest of the enzyme is folded. If the bonding in between you know other amino acids in the enzyme if that bonding is effective then that will affect the 3d shape of the enzyme and therefore this active site sh sh uh, shape is also going to change okay so here is our substrate molecule now very importantly our substrate um, which is going to fit into our active site it has to be complementary in shape so that means the shape of the active site matches the shape of our substrate. If you have a different substrate then it's not going to be able to fit. So for example here with this orange substrate if the substrate were to collide with the enzyme it would not be able to fit into the active site because the shapes are not complementary. So this substrate is not specific for this enzyme and therefore the enzyme is not able to catalyze any reaction with that substrate. However, for our substrate that is complementary in shape, when it binds into the active site, we then get these temporary hydrogen bonds forming, which holds it in place um, and makes it stable so that the reaction can take place. What we have now this is called an enzyme substrate complex where the substrate is in the active site and bound to it. So the reaction takes place and the substrate is going to be turned into the product. In this case we've got subs one substrate being broken down into two products. The hydrogen bonds break and the products are released. And as you can see the enzyme and the active site are unchanged. They're the same as they were before which is why enzymes are able to be used over and over and over again. Okay, now there are two um, different hypotheses for the, the details of how this works. So the first is the lock and key. So here is our enzyme, and this time we're going to have two substrates which are going to be combined into one product. So when they collide with the enzyme and with the active site, they're going to go into the active site here, and you can see that the shape of the substrates is exactly complementary to the shape of the active site. So hydrogen bonds, temporary bonds will hold them in place. They're complementary. The product is formed. The product is released. However, uh, it's thought that a slightly better way of um, explaining how this works is using the induced fit hypothesis. So in this case, um, we're going to have the same substrates, but you can see that the active site is not exactly complementary to the shape of the substrates. So when this substrate molecule comes to the active site, the shape of the active site changes slightly. And it changes, it, the, the change is induced by the presence of the substrate, and it means that the substrate is able to fit really well. So the same thing will happen with the second substrate as it comes to the active site. There's a slight change in the shape of the active site so that it fits 
um, sort of fits around it. So in this way, this induced fit means that there's a slight, there's just even better fit between the substrate and the enzyme when they are in an enzyme substrate complex. So they are now fully complementary, which means our product gets formed and it gets released. When the product is released, the shape of the active site returns back to its original position. So the active site moves around the substrate. It's induced to make that change. But then when the substrate or the product leaves, it goes back to its original shape. OK, so now we're going to talk about activation energy. So this is about um, how enzymes are actually able to speed up a reaction. So substrate molecules, um, so if this is a particular reaction, the substrate molecules will have a certain amount of free energy. So this is just the energy that molecules have. All molecules, all particles will have energy. In this particular reaction, our products have got a lower um, energy level than our substrate. It doesn't have to be like that, but that's what we're looking at in this example. In order to go from substrate to products, however, an initial input of energy is needed. So this is the level of energy that is needed for the reaction to take place if you don't have the enzyme. So the substrate molecules have got this much energy. For the reaction to take place, you need to give them energy in order to then form products. And the amount of energy that's needed at that increase, okay, the increase from what, what the substrates originally have is what we call our activation energy. With an enzyme, the activation energy is lower. So the enzymes are able to hold the substrate in a particular way that means that less energy is needed to turn it into products. So with the enzyme, a smaller input of energy is needed before the reaction can take place. So we have a lower activation energy. So if less energy is needed for the reaction to take place, it makes it more likely that the reaction is going to happen and therefore the reaction happens more rapidly. And that's why enzymes, uh, that's why reactions take place much faster with enzymes because they lower the activation energy required for the reaction. Okay, that's all. Thank you.